was I a 16 year old degenerate stoner virgin with my friends after school? Yeah, yes. Iconic. Okay. <laughs> That's what I was like in high school. Hi, I'm Jenny Mai here with the News Movement, and today we're here with Max Burkholder, star of the new TED prequel series, which you can now watch on both Sky Max in the UK and Peacock in the US. Wait, you're not wearing pants. Where'd you get this? Don't you worry about where I'm keeping stuff. Hi, Max. Hi, how's it going? Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. Absolutely. Obviously, throughout the TED series, you are the star, but you have a pretty significant co-star in the form of like maybe the cutest teddy bear I've ever seen in my entire life. Life. And I know, I've heard that um, you and a couple of the other cast members were sent a giant life-size personal teddy bear to bring around yes. as well. Uh, when everybody got cast, right around the time that we, we were announcing, uh, we were able to announce that we got cast in it, production sent everybody a life-size Ted doll that they said, you know, take him around with you, talk to him, like put him on chairs, like, like, Truly, they wanted us to like talk to him and bring him around just to get used to how he is in space. Mm -hmm. And uh, because when we're filming, there's no bear there. It's right. just completely empty space. Which is space, insane. Which is wild, and we can talk about that, but that, and that was distressing. Uh, but, you know, it was just before I was allowed to announce uh, that I was cast in the show, and I said, well, can I bring him around if I'm like not really allowed to talk about it? Yeah. And the producer was like, yeah, as long as you're not afraid of people thinking you're an absolute insane person. What was the most like Ted-like situation you got yourself into with your life-size teddy bear? Probably just getting hammered at a bar called Babs on nice. McDougal and uh, smoking inside. It was great. That's pretty classic. Yeah. Classic Ted. That's, yeah. a, that's a classic, yeah. You were channeling him. Mm -hmm. So you played John Bennett in the show, yes. who is played by Mark Wahlberg in the original right. movie series. So I'm curious, like, what is it like to take on not only what I imagine is the pressure of like some a role that's already been played by someone as iconic as Mark Wahlberg, sure. but also like the story implications of like taking on a, a person, a character that has already existed before you coming into it? Yeah, for sure. I think it would have been tougher and a little more pressure if it, if it was like a sequel mm -hmm. and I was playing something that had already been established mm -hmm. by another mm -hmm. actor. But I, I think I got a little bit of leeway just because it's a prequel, it's before we see him, so I kind of had the freedom to do what I wanted with it. I think I was most concerned about maybe getting the Boston accent wrong, mm. because I don't know how much you know about Bostonians, but they're very vocal when they don't like someone representing their city in yes. a particular way, and yes. I wanted to avoid uh, you know, either being cussed out or having shit beat out of me. That's I really fair. Wanted, I really <laughs> wanted to make sure that that was so. What's the bad? But Ted can get mom to swear. Just eat your supper. So I feel like, because this is a prequel series, it reminds me of this like ongoing discourse discussion about how a lot of entertainment seems to be like relying on existing IP, essentially, yeah. right? So like, it makes sense as a business tactic for sure, but I'm curious what your take on it is as an actor. Like, do you like working with existing material? Do you wish there was more original stuff? Where do you land? I mean, I totally wish there was more original stuff. Um, and, and that could even be like adapting existing IP from other media like books and, you know, stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. The Last of Us I thought was great. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only good video game adaptation that has ever been made. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wish there was more, uh, more fresh new stuff it's it, it gets kind of like tired and stale after mm. a while so another like aspect of the ip thing is like as i like kind of mentioned earlier is that it obviously like is a pretty guaranteed way to make money sure so i'm curious if like you felt the effects of that at all like on your set because like the ted one and two movies made over 750 million dollars worldwide yeah, i wonder if that affected your experience at all the money side of it, I'll, I'll say this about the money side of it. I know it made all that money, but I also know that we were the most expensive television comedy of all time mm. uh, per episode, which is crazy when you consider like, you know, at the end of at the end of Friends, all of those people were making a million dollars, yeah. dollars an episode. Truly, a million dollars Nuts. an episode. Same with like Charlie Sheen and Two and a Half Men. Um, but we were still the most expensive just because it costs so goddamn much to animate the bear. There's a scene, I think in the sixth episode, uh, it was the first episode we shot, um, where we're sitting in a classroom and uh, I lean over and I fist bump Ted, which wasn't scripted, mm. so they had to you know, animate in a little extra. Uh, and I went to the VFX guy after the fact, the head VFX guy, Blair, and I was like, hey, how much like, does that fist bump Cost. Oh, like in uh, at the end of the day, like break it down. Once for it's me. Uh, fully animated, he was like anywhere from like forty to eighty thousand dollars, 
And I was like, oh, for one fist bump. Holy shit! Oh my God. I would also love to talk some about some of your past work, which you're very well known for your role on Parenthood. But before we get there, my favorite role of yours is the cute, adorable small child Billy on Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Yes. What was that like? Being was that your first time on a Disney set? What was that? Yeah, that would have been my first. That's a that's a good call. You that would have so been my small. first time on a Disney set. I was still small, and I think I was like five, oh maybe six. I was still small enough that I still didn't really understand anything that was going on. So let's actually talk about Parenthood, which is an awesome show. Um, my boyfriend's parents are actually obsessed with it. So Donna and Steve, this one's for you. Hey, Donna. <laughs> hey, Steve. Oh my God. They're Thanks for watching. Actually be obsessed with that. <laughs> <laughs> but Max, obviously on Parenthood, is a child with Asperger's. And yes. like you playing him like actually raised so much awareness. Like it was, it led to it being like one of the most searched terms on Google, yeah. which is pretty crazy. What was it like for you to take on that responsibility, especially as someone who was like so young at that time yourself? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do it again today. Mm. Um, you know, with just just everything that everybody's learned in the intervening years mm. of, of like what it means to like actually be representative of, of people with you know on the spectrum. It's just you know, Jason Kadem's the the EP and, and showrunner of Parenthood, whose whose son is on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. You know, recently made a show about autistic adults mm. with three actual autistic young nice, adults. Nice. So it's like there's been a lot of progress there. You know, at the time I didn't know what was going on my shoulders in terms of representation. Yeah. I was ten when you I got were the so part. You so little, yeah. yeah. They brought in like a child psychologist mm -hmm. to like walk me through everything and just like this is how you just sort of like approximate the mannerisms of, of somebody mm -hmm. with what is formerly known as Asperger's. Um, yeah, uh, Dr. Asperger uh, was a Nazi, so they've changed the name. Okay, yeah. awesome. That yeah. is yeah. good to know. Wow, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, good to know. Oh, wow. um, but, you know, I'm, I'm still very proud, you know, even though I, I wouldn't go into a role representing someone uh, on the spectrum today, mm. I'm still proud of the work that I did. Yeah. I, I got, you know, a lot of positive feedback from the community, both people on the spectrum and, mm -hmm. and people with loved ones on the spectrum, mm -hmm. you know, just, just thanking me for, for being what little representation there was at the time. Yeah. So to bring it all back to Ted and mm -hmm. this current moment in time, how do you feel like your past roles or even like past life events has like led to this moment? How has it helped you prepare? What did you bring any of that to John Bennett in this particular project? Did I bring any of my life into John Bennett? A hundred percent. Was I a 16 year old degenerate stoner virgin with my friends after school? Yeah. Yes. Iconic. Okay. <laughs> That's what I was like in high school. I got good grades, but I was doing all the bad shit. It Other, led you to here. Hey, 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 from here. That's actually what you needed to yeah, get the role. <laughs> 100%. No, my self-tape was just me ripping a bong. Nice. Know, no other lines. Just. No lines. Just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah. And they were like, got it. He's yeah. in. This guy gets <laughs> it. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Parenthood shot on the same lot as Ted. Mm. Uh, you know, I went in through the same gate every day shooting Ted as oh. I did on Parenthood. It was it was definitely a throwback to me. I spent like seven years on that lot. Mm. Yeah. Oh my God, you grew up there. Yeah. 100%. Wow. 